Shalom. This week, Sedra, Sedra's Vayera. Everyone has to answer to someone. That was a word of advice that I received from a mentor about people who think that if they start their own business, they'll be the boss and never have to answer to anyone else. My mentor, who himself had started a number of successful businesses, was explaining that even owners of their own companies must answer to their clients. If they don't keep their clients updated on their services being provided to them, they'll soon find themselves without any clients. You might be the boss, but you still have to answer to someone. In this week's Torah portion, it would seem, it would seem that even God has to answer, some, to answer to someone, Avram. After welcoming his angels into his home, and the angels informing Avram that he could expect a baby soon, this week's Torah portion includes this statement. The angels set out from there and looked towards stone. Avram was walking with them to send them off. Now Shem had said, should I hide from Avram what I'm about to do? Since Avram is to become a great and populous nation, and all the nations of the earth are to bless themselves, themselves by him? It's curious that God felt the need to confer with Avram. Rashi and Sforno offer two different explanations for God's discussion with Avram. Rashi wrote that God said, if it's not proper for me, for, it's not proper for me to do this thing without Avram's knowledge. I gave him this land, and these five cities are his. I called him Avram, the father of multitude of nations. Should I destroy the children without informing the father who loves me? Sforno wrote that God said, It's appropriate that I do not conceal from Avram my attribute of goodness. I will inform him that if among all these wicked people in stone, I find even ten righteous people, this will represent hope that eventually all or most of the people will become righteous people. In that event, I would bend the scales of justice in favor of the town, giving them an extension of time before destroying them. God teaches that he is more interested in the return of sinners to the righteous path than administrating retribution to them. While Rashi maintained that God told Avram the plan to destroy stone because God was planning on destroying cities that God had previously promised Avram, the Sforno held that God told Avram because God wanted Avram to know the people of stone would have been saved even if they only had 10 righteous people, and that God was more interested in having people return to the right path than punishing those that sin. The Talmud quoted our rabbis who taught that there are three partners in the creation of a person. There's God, the father, and the mother. God did not create the world as a single player entity. God created the world with the notion that human beings would play a role in the world's destiny. At first, Noah's generation made people's partnership a disaster, but humanity improved with Avram's teaching ethical monotheism to the world. God didn't design a world that was run without human beings' influence on events. Although the people of Sodom deserve to be annihilated, and God's justice is perfect, God didn't act alone. God didn't want a world where people had no influence on events. God conferred with Avram either, as Rashi maintained, because God was planning on destroying cities that God had previously promised Avram, or as the Sforno maintained, that God wanted Avram to know the people of stone would have been saved even if they only had 10 righteous people, and that God is more interested in having people return to the right path than punish, punish those that sin. Shabbat Shalom.